captioning for News 12 is brought to you by Kenneth Nugent. From the station that's on your side, this is News 12 First at 5. A cold front bringing the chance for showers, even a low risk for severe storms tomorrow. But first... The rain moved out, the crowds flooding downtown Augusta today, celebrating St. Patrick's Day for the first time in two years, a gathering we haven't seen in quite a while. Taking a live look now, we are live up in the air over Broad Street in the Augusta Common as the celebration continues. The parade is wrapped up, but the celebrations are happening until 10 o'clock tonight. And you can see a lot of people still out and a lot of people in green today. With COVID cases down, hospitalizations low, people are clearly more comfortable to get out and about in larger crowds. Piedmont Augusta, down to 10 COVID patients, while the Charlie Norwood VA says they don't have any at all right now. Our Claire Allen joins us now live downtown to give us a close-up look at the festivities. And Claire, it is loud where you are. We're fortunate enough to check him out. Yeah, Meredith, it's loud out here. The party is still going on here downtown Augusta. There's plenty to do for kids and adults also. I was there front row at the St. Patrick's Day Parade. People were smiling, catching candy, and beads after two years of not being able to be in big crowds. Folks in the CSRA are excited. My favorite part was the marching band, and people even started dancing on Broad Street. It goes to show how happy people are to be back outside and what it means to them. Uh, it feels uh, completely normal. Um, I brought my niece and nephew out to celebrate St. Patty's Day. And, you know, just bring it back to normal to see because the last couple of years we hadn't been able to have it. So it just, uh, it feels a sense of normalcy. Happy. After all that we've been through with the pandemic, happy. Next on News 12 at 6 o'clock, I will have more of what people have to say, saying that it's a long time coming and they're ready for more. Thanks very much. It's great to see the Augusta Common full of people it again. Is. Downtown Broad Street full of folks wearing green. We have missed it so much. It is good to be back at least to some normalcy. And it is good to see that the weather cooperated today. Last night was a bit of some weird weather, Riley. It, it really was. That hail threat definitely verified for us. We had some very large hailstones actually up to the size of golf balls around places like Martinez, West Augusta, uh, even portions of the southern CS where you saw some large hail. We did take a little while to actually break the cloud cover this morning, but finally bringing back some sunshine. A beautiful view over downtown Augusta that we were just taking a look at. Clear skies for this evening and to tonight, and in, any plans to be outside, hey, it's beautiful outside. We're 70 degrees at the moment through this evening. Temperatures generally staying in the 70s and 60s, so not overly cold, not overly warm, just very comfortable across the area. But take a look off west. This is our next cold front, and this will be showing up by the time we get to late in the day on Friday and not really exiting the region until we most likely get to Saturday, so bringing us the risk for severe storms again heading into our Friday afternoon. For this evening, though, temps once again, 60s, uh, just after sunset, falling into the 50s overnight. Generally clear skies, so that should actually help temperatures cool off into the 40s by early tomorrow morning. There will be the opportunity for some dense fog to form late tonight with those cool temps. Later into the afternoon, that's when the storms are going to show up for us tomorrow. We'll have much more on that severe weather risk in just about 10 minutes. All right, thanks for that, Riley. Crews are working to repair a road cave-in in Augusta. Look at this. A heavy thunderstorm last night was to blame for this. The city tells us Walden Drive closed to through traffic between Parkway Drive and Wycliffe Street. They say it is blocked off until repairs are made, but right now they're not able to give us an idea of when that will be. We did follow up again this afternoon and officials told us crews were still out there, still trying to figure out the scope of the issue and what exactly caused it. But of course the weather last night did not help. Not yeah, with this situation. Too much water in too little of a time last night. New today, ticket sales suspended for that week-long concert series that was set to happen Masters Week. This comes a few weeks after the C4 Live said they paused production for the XPR Augusta concerts because of a potential structural issue. They say the problem was with the ground itself and not the stadium complex. The company says if you already have a ticket, they're going to contact you directly directly about any changes. A one-year-old girl is safe and her father in custody now after police issued an Amber Alert early this morning. 
South Fulton officials said there was a physical fight between the girl's parents, and that's when her dad took her yesterday. They previously said he was wanted on kidnapping charges. Four Disney employees are behind bars after a massive undercover operation targeting human traffickers, child predators, and sex work. The six-day sting operation led to the arrest of 108 people total. A Disney lifeguard allegedly sent inappropriate photos to what he believed was a 14-year-old girl. The other three Disney employees are charged with soliciting sex workers. The sheriff's office says members of anti-trafficking organizations will help talk to the sex workers to see if they are human trafficking victims. Also today, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. You could be saving some money on gas in Georgia sometime soon. A bill to suspend the state gas tax is on its way to Governor Kemp, and he's already said he'll sign it. Once signed into law, the tax would be suspended through the end of May. Right now, the tax is 29 cents per gallon. Today, a man seriously injured in a bridge collapse five months ago is sharing his story. Robert Mullins is one of three men who fell when a bridge next to the interstate in Newton County collapsed into the Yellow River. He says he remembers one of his co-workers telling him the bridge was falling, and then the whole bridge just came out from under them. Demario Battle died that day. Mullins remembers his friend of eight years as a good person and a good dad who was always willing to help out. The emotional state that I have right now is just really unbearable, like, because I, I think about Mario each and every day, that I can't see him no more, that I can't call him, that he can't call me FaceTime. And, and I just go through a lot of emotion, emotional breakdowns at times when I think about my friend. He left eight children behind. The investigation into the bridge collapse is still ongoing. Another set of senior apartments coming to Aiken. Last night, the Planning Commission voted unanimously to recommend this plan. This new project will go next to the Magnolia, the other senior complex, apartment complex there in Aiken. That one was approved by City Council last year. It would be a 60-unit senior housing development. It would be at the intersection of Whiskey Road and Stratford Drive. Well, we saw some severe storms yesterday and heading into our Friday, we could see round two. We'll talk about that severe risk for our Friday and possibly even early Saturday coming up just after the break. Time and time. Come on in to Davis Appliance and Furniture where you can find the best deals in town. It's tax time, so when that refund comes in, it's the perfect time to get the furniture you've always wanted. For the brands you trust at the lowest prices, visit us at Davis Appliance and Furniture. There was a sound in the breeze. Rick, call me right now. Come on in to Davis Appliance and Furniture, where you can find the best deals in town. It's tax time, so when that refund comes in, it's the perfect time to get the furniture you've always wanted. For the brands you trust at the lowest prices, visit us at Davis Appliance and Furniture. There was a sound in the breeze. A song from the trees. There was the dew. Just an ordinary place, but I held you just in case we travel to the end of time. And I know that I love you. I hear you singing in my mind. I'm Jen. I own Field Dave. Come on in to Davis Appliance and Furniture, where you can find the best deals in town. It's tax time, so when that refund comes in, it's the perfect time to get the furniture you've always wanted. For the brands you trust at the lowest prices, visit us at Davis Appliance and Furniture. And welcome back on the St. Patrick's Day edition. First at 5, we have some live pictures from downtown, the Augusta Common, where a lot of people filed there uh, after the big parade downtown. And it was just a, turned out to be a beautiful afternoon. A lot of clouds early, but look at it there. I love nice seeing sun. so many people out and about in downtown Augusta. The COVID cases are low. Hospitalizations are low. It's nice to feel safe to be out and about again. A lot of people taking advantage of a oh, nice it. afternoon, Riley. Absolutely beautiful weather, as you mentioned. It took a little while for those clouds to break. You know, it was really yeah. just for us here around the metro. Most of the areas saw a good bit of sunshine, but 
one dry day heading into tomorrow. Unfortunately, another round possibly of some severe weather. So we do have a first alert in effect for tomorrow afternoon through tomorrow night and most likely going to extend this even into our Saturday. But heading into our Saturday, that risk will be more confined to our counties that are going to be south of I-20. So this first alert is thanks to a cold front. This is going to bring us some scattered thunderstorms heading into tomorrow afternoon. And then the front's not going to completely clear us until we most likely get to around midday Saturday. So for the first round tomorrow afternoon to tomorrow night, all different types of severe weather possible. So yesterday it was mainly just the hail threat we were focusing on. Tomorrow these storms could produce strong wind gusts, large hail again, possibly even a low tornado threat as well. Once those storms clear out by around midday Saturday, uh, we are still expecting very breezy conditions into our Saturday afternoon where those gusts likely will get up to 30 miles per hour at least. But this is our severe weather threat Saturday morning through around midday. You can see that does eliminate our northern counties. So that will be that cold front that will be moving through. So if you're behind the front, you're going to be safe from severe storms. But for the rest of us, just can't rule out that a couple of those storms do turn on the strong side. Here's a look at the different threats and the possibility of them. So high winds, large hail, about a 5% risk for those, 2% for tornadoes. Even though those percentages sound very low, think of it as just 2% of this entire green area being impacted by tornadoes. So it's more of a spatial uh, percentage than your uh, absolute risk for it to happen for you. So just keep in mind, there will be the opportunity for some of those storms to turn severe tomorrow afternoon. And again on Saturday morning, that severe weather threat does not eliminate from the CSRA until we most likely get into most likely Saturday afternoon and evening. Once again, all different types of threats going to be on the board, just going to be a lower in threat. Not meaning that they're not expected, just meaning that spatial coverage of those impacts will be isolated rather than widespread across the area. But look at all these clouds that were sticking around early this morning. Those are finally clearing out for us. Clear skies and calm winds overnight that will allow temperatures to drop to the 40s by tomorrow morning and could give way to some dense fog as well. That's our cold front that's going to be heading our way for tomorrow. So a dry start Friday. Any outdoor plans for the first half of the day are looking perfectly fine. Once we move past lunchtime tomorrow, this will be our first wave of storms. Possibly a few severe warnings uh, being found up ahead of those uh, storms, especially with temperatures reaching the mid to upper 70s tomorrow afternoon. Through Friday night, we'll likely see a break in the action, but early Saturday, that's when the main front arrives. So as this front's continuing across the region, we could see a few of those storms start to blossom once again. But just keep in mind, it's not until Saturday afternoon that rain does completely clear. Uh, the river region. So first alerts are in effect for Friday afternoon through Saturday morning. Beautiful weather though in store by the time we get to our Sunday. First day of spring Sunday and should feel great. Let's head down the coast of Florida. Give you a live look here. The Kennedy Space Center, NASA's newest rocket, is about to be rolled out of that huge vehicle assembly building and heading for the launch pad. From start to finish, that little journey will take between 6 to 12 hours to travel that 4 miles over to launch pad 39A. The rocket will be part of the Artemis 1 mission, which plans to orbit the moon. Future Artemis missions will return NASA astronauts to the actual lunar surface. Big day down at the Kennedy so Space cool. Center. So cool, I know. As the journey begins out of the building where it was built. <laughs> well, a call for the Transportation Department to update the car crash dummies, how women are left out, and what lawmakers are trying to do about that. First of five. The live by camera. Car crash testing for female drivers. That is the call from some members of Congress. Our national investigative team finds that women are left out of the equation for most federal crash tests. There's been some movement, but as John Decker reports, lawmakers say not nearly enough. More pressure is being applied by dozens of members of Congress on the Transportation Secretary to immediately take action to make cars safer for women. The action comes on the heels of a series of reports from Investigate TV, highlighting the gender disparity in safety on the road, a disparity in part attributable to the unequal use of female crash test dummies in the current crash test system. The 66 lawmakers, all Democrats, in a letter to Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, say they are pleased that the Bipartisan Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act included a provision that requires the Government Accountability Office to study the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's use of crash test dummies in vehicle safety tests and mandates that NHTSA issue a report on the subject within a year. But they say that study does not go far enough. 
it's a really serious problem. And so um, it is time for us to act and get NHTSA to follow through. The person that can make that happen is the Secretary of Transportation, um, Secretary Buttigieg. Lawmakers, including 11 members of the Appropriations Committee, 12 members of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, and eight members of the House Energy and Commerce Committee are imploring Buttigieg to immediately and unilaterally transition federal testing to the most up-to-date crash test dummy technology for both male and female occupants. Chris O'Connor is the president and CEO of Humanetics, the leading global designer, manufacturer, and supplier of crash test dummies. His company produces the new technology lawmakers are calling for, technology that's been available for nearly a decade, but has yet to be adopted by the U.S., despite counterparts in Europe and in Asia already using it. The fact that 73% uh, of, of women are more likely to be injured, almost 20% more likely to die in the same crash, I think requires immediate movement. And so I think uh, uh, DOT Secretary P could make a significant change and an immediate change to say, we're not okay, we're going to make the change immediately, and, and has that authority to really do that. So far, no direct response to the letter from Secretary Buttigieg or the Transportation Department. NHTSA told us in a statement, the bipartisan infrastructure law will allow NHTSA to accelerate research to evaluate remaining gender disparities in fatality and injury outcomes and determine how to eliminate them. But lawmakers say that the administration needs to show they care about gender equity, not just talk about it. That's why we are asking him to take the leadership role and to act on this quickly. Um, there's just too much at stake. In Washington, I'm John Decker. Another requirement of the infrastructure bill is for NHTSA to cart, chart its pathway forward. The agency recently opened a public comment period for its strategic plan, which says this year or next it will propose adding the latest crash test dummies to the new car assessment program. Grant me hope.